Jose Garcia. I'm Rodrigo Redondo. And I'm Michael Wolf. This is Clutch Design. There's four main types of clutches. You have the friction clutch, the mechanical lockup clutch, the electromagnetic clutch, and the oil shear clutch. All these clutches have many different applications and uses. Uh, one of the most common designs is, a, is the dry frictional disc clutch design because of its low cost and uh, low cost to use and low cost to maintain. There's uh, five main components to this clutch design. You have the flywheel, the clutch disc, the pressure plate, the throwout bearing, and the actuator lever. The way this whole process works is the engine has, has a mechanical energy which is stored, which is uh, transferred or stored in the flywheel which is attached to the uh, pressure plate. That stored energy, that inertial load, is, um, is broken or actuated through this actuator lever. When you apply the clutch or you uh, release the actuator lever, there begin, you begin to have a, a friction on this clutch disc. That friction produces a force, an axial force, um, an axial force along the uh, clutch disc, which then drives a uh, transmission or a drive shaft. It is damped through springs located circumferentially around the diameter of the clutch disc. Now, in our design, we primarily deal with mechanical and hydraulic actuation, but it's also noted there's, there are some electric operations for actuation. The pneumatic is generally in a factory setting and a self-actuating, which is like a centrifugal clutch. Um, the three main equations that, uh, that our, our system deals with are the normal force calculation and the actual force calculation. Now, both of these equations, as you can see here, are uh, exactly the same, and this is considering a, um, a uniform pressure distribution along this clutch disc material. Now, once you have the axial force, you can then use that axial force and apply it into the uh, maximum moment equation or maximum torque equation. And what you need to take into consideration is the uh, coefficient of friction, which uh, Joe here is going to talk a little bit about. Thank you. There you go, Joe. So coefficient of friction is a major part in material selection because with different coefficient of frictions you're going to have different outputs. So the four things you want to consider are actuation force, which was shown in the previous slide. Then you have your heat dissipation, which can be looked, if you look at the max temperatures, that will help you have a better decision on what material you want to select. And then you have your torque transmitted and your energy loss. And those are both directly correlated to the coefficient of friction. And these are the four materials that are normally found in disc clutches, organic, Kevlar, carbon ceramic, and cinder iron. I'm going to go a little bit into detail about each of them. Organic um, is really nice. It's actually the most commonly found in all cars. It can hold, uh, withstand a load up to 400 horsepower. Um, it has very smooth engagement, so it's nice. It keeps a smooth ride. It has a long life, which is what you want in your car. You don't want things to be breaking down. You want things to be smooth. Um, it's really nice because if it's overheated, and then um, you can let it cool down and it'll restore it back to normal thing. It won't warp and you'll have all those contact surfaces that you need to transmit the torque properly. The problem with this organic thing is it used to have, a, it's still made with um, iron that's coated with asbestos and there's a lot of health issues that relate with that. So now they're trying to change it to fiberglass and brass. Next is Kevlar. It um, has a little bit more slippage than organic. It has a little bit of a higher temperature range um, which is nice depending on what type of, like, the, like I said before, uh, energy loss is a big part. Um, and the problem with Kevlar is that it doesn't restore to original conditions once it's overheated. So once it overheated, it's probably warped and you have to replace it. Um, it's good up to 500 horsepower. Carbon ceramic um, is nice because there's a lot higher range, heat range. You can go up to 500 degrees Celsius and that's mainly because one of the sides is ceramic, so it has a higher, it can withstand more heat. Um, it's up to, it can all go up as well, like Kevlar up to 500 horsepower. Cindered iron is 
uh, the the strongest the, the problem with cinder dynamics is so rough that a normal flywheel flywheel would be torn to shreds. So you have to ver use a very sp special surface of for for the flywheel. Um, it can hold up to set about 700 horsepower, and it has extreme temperature ranges, which is really nice. This is usually used to pull tractors or drag racing. The problem with cinder iron is it kicks, which is not what you want in your car, but for a drag racing, you want to kick off the line, you want to beat the other person. These are just some examples of the cars that would be suitable for each clutches. Um, and the, uh, you have the Honda Civic, the Chevy Camaro, and the Acura RL. For, carbon, for Kevlar and carbon ceramic uh, clutch discs, a Ford Mustang, Porsche, and Dodge Challenger. So you have, you're getting a little bit higher, more into the, the racing aspect of the for a clutch. And then now you got your real race cars, and that's why you use your cindered iron car. Um, the, the problem is, if you don't choose the right material, you're going to have failure. So we'll have Rodrigo come and explain uh, failure. Now, there are four main types of failure. The first one is slip, then you have jutter, you also have sticking, and then you have wear and tear. The first one, which is slipping, it occurs when the disc, the drive disc, and the driven ditch do not uh, rotate at the same speed at the same time. Now, you have a few reasons for that. One of them being overheating, which is caused when you have a damaged release system or when you allow your clutch to slip for a long period of time. You also have the diam damaged diaphragm, which happens when you have an excessive bearing preload or you have damaged uh, release bearings. And finally, you have contamination of oil or grease in the front of the flywheel, which damages completely the flywheel, you have to replace it. The second type of failure is jodder. And there's two reasons for this. One of them being not enough lubrication, the wrong type of lubrication, or too much lubrication. Uh, the other reason is the release bearings can be contaminated by oil or grease, or you have a damaged release system. Now the third type of failure is sticking. Now you have a few reasons for this. The main one is you have air in the hydraulic lines, which cause a very big drop in pressure. The second reason is misadjusted linkage, and which this means is when you press down on your pedal, a lot of uh, force is not transferred to the clutch, which doesn't let it work efficiently. Then you have not enough tension in your clutch cable, which pushes and pulls the components efficiently. And then you have mismatch components, which basically means the parts in your system are not compatible with the type of clutch you have. And finally, we have wear and tear. And this usually happens with excessive amounts of friction, heat damage, for example in this picture, you have contamination of oil, and there's also a combination of rust and a combination of failure of the other types. And for conclusion, when you're designing a clutch, you have to take three things into consideration. One is the material you need to use for the application you need, and the other one is how the system can fail and how to prevent it, to have a clutch that works for a long time.